uh, inside job in uh, cricket shooting goes viral. And so now people are aware of that. Uh, also, uh, with the thing in Northern Ireland, we said, let's see if there was a drill going on at that time. And let's see if the security forces didn't shoot back and stood down. <clears throat> it's now come out today. It's in major British papers and Irish papers and European papers. And we're going to go over that. Uh, Webster digressing, and we'll go back to the Obama bills, just a little foresight of what's coming up later. Uh, what does this sound like to you yet again with them shooting two members of the British military and now shooting a police officer last night, right when Ireland's starting to get more of its sovereignty? Well, I'm not very familiar with the details of all this because I, I, I've been paying attention to economics. But the, what we do know is that uh, the um, British government of Gordon Brown has tremendous totalitarian ambitions. Gordon Brown is really the guy who started this whole policy of bailouts, uh, giving hundreds of billions of dollars or hundreds of billions of pounds to bankrupt banks in an attempt to prop up this castle of derivatives. Uh, he's the one who started that, right? That was Northern Rock going bankrupt during the second half of 2007, which was then the recipient of hundreds of billions of pounds at the end of 2007, and then nationalized, in effect, by the British government in the beginning of 2008. So that's really the model, and they, they just did that again this past week. They nationalized Lloyds Bank, which is one of the big clearing banks, as they call them, one of the four or five banks in Britain that have offices all around, you know, retail, retail bankers. So Lloyds Bank is now uh, nationalized, and you can see that uh, Gordon Brown is making policy. Gordon Brown was here in Washington last week. He addressed the joint session of the Congress, and he's a big supporter of free trade. Oh, he's, he's telling about the free market and the free trade and how great that is. And, of course, Obama is embarrassed by, by Gordon Brown because it's clear that Obama is basically following orders from Gordon Brown. So you may have heard some of the right-wing talk show hosts make a big deal about how uh, Gordon Brown was snubbed by Obama, and I think this is essentially baseless. This was a little bit of a dog and pony show, right? That they, they, they kind of did a charade to make it look like Obama was not working directly for Gordon Brown, but I think he is. Gordon Brown also wants $500 billion for the International Monetary Fund. Now, if you want to have the New World Order, that's it. Whatever the New World Order is going to be, it's going to be centered in the international monetary fund. Well, they've right said now. that they're making their own court for Madoff and others that the bankers will run because they're the experts. And it'll be a new <laughs> bank of the world that you pay your carbon taxes to. That's now all over the news. I mean, more and more every day. I mean, it's here. They've called in the Wall Street Journal for a North American Union to save us out of the crisis. So you're absolutely right. Yeah, the, the International Monetary Fund is what's going to, you know, cap this entire thing. In other words, it'll be the apex of the entire uh, edifice. And, and uh, right now they want more money for bankrupt uh, uh, speculators in Eastern Europe and so forth. Uh, I think it's also uh, important to look at the, uh, the evolution of the derivatives. Now, my, my view of the crisis, of course, is that it's totally out of control, that nobody controls this crisis because it's bringing down all of their institutions one after another. Last, year, last week we had the big AIG uh, story, right, that AIG had lost $62 billion in one quarter. And, of course, that's all derivative. This is a very important example because it, it refutes this story that you hear from Limbaugh, O'Reilly, Hannity, and all the rest of these clowns, that the crisis was created by poor people getting subprime mortgages. Well, well that was about... publicly the cover story to get the bailout, but it's, the bill said it was for derivatives, now in the multi-trillions and growing just in the United States, not to count worldwide. So it's on record that it is the bankers' derivatives, but yes, they want to blame it on the American people, so we feel like we have indebtedness to go along with this. Right, and uh, AIG has now taken, they've gotten $160 billion already. They're going to get another $30 billion immediately, another $200 billion on top of that, just for AIG. Now, this is an insurance company. The interesting thing that came up in the hearings here last week in the, uh, the uh, Dodd-Shelby Senate Banking Committee and also the, the Wyden Committee, the, the Senate uh, Budget Committee, who got that money? It turns out that the money given to AIG was then passed along to European banks, European derivatives merchants. Foreign bankers got that money and, of course, Goldman Sachs. Now, the fact that Goldman Sachs got all that money through AIG opens up Hanky Panky Paulson, Henry Paulson, the former Secretary of the Treasury under Bush, of course, whose entire wealth 
was wrapped up in options and other instruments and, and benefits that he had from, from Goldman Sachs, which is what he worked for. Now, the big thing is the derivative scandal, I think, is about to explode. Uh, today in the Washington Post, we have an article by a guy called Smick, where he says the derivatives problem is a black hole. And the reason that Geithner can't come forward with any programs is because it's going to take trillions, at least two to three trillion. And everybody in the Obama administration is afraid to come forward and say, we want two trillion or three trillion and by the way so that that's what the that's what larry summers is coming out and saying from the white house he's saying we need trillions more that's in the news today absolutely well that's very interesting i think that the dam is breaking on this question see for the average person the big issue is what caused the depression why is there a depression why should there be a depression what has changed well the big difference is we have 1.5 quadrillion of derivatives the leverage on that used to be positive, which meant super profits at the apex of the pyramid. Yeah, they built Ponzi schemes, and now they've imploded. And if they can get us to sign on, they'll take over. But if they don't, it'll come out, they wreck the economy, and they all go to prison. I had Ron Paul calling for their indictments of these bank heads earlier in the show, so you're absolutely right. Well, it's going to take something more, and this is what I recommend. When it comes to derivatives, there's only one policy. Wipe them out. Destroy them. Shred them. Delete them. Burn them. Uh, make them into wallpaper. Freeze them. them Freeze them is the best. Well, <laughs> I think you've got to get them out of the universe. And that's the problem with this guy, Smick, is he, he realizes that derivatives are a black hole, but you can't... You can't and they won't even ban... The they won't even... I've had top economist on the last two weeks. They won't even ban naked short selling. Well, that, that may be coming. But anyway, that, that doesn't stop us. Our demand has to be, and this, this is really a matter of, of economic science, if you want to get out of the Depression, there's only one way to do it, and it's got to be done by government because nobody else can do it. Ban derivatives. Derivatives were illegal from 1936 and the New Deal until 1982 when Reagan came in under the influence of Milton Friedman and the rest of these people. Derivatives were illegal. And from 1982 until 1993, they were a very, very dubious legality. Nobody was willing to buy them because there was still this idea that they might be But illegal. then they used AIG to AAA certify them as an insurance company, and so they labeled literal buckets of crap as gold. Right, and this was done in 1993. It's Wendy Graham, the wife of Phil Graham. Uh, she came in and said, I'm going to make a safe haven for derivatives. She was backed up by Bob Rubin of Goldman Sachs, by... Uh, Summers, the same guy that we have today. Arrest them all. And also, also by a Greenspan, of course. And then Arrest Phil him. Graham, Phil Graham of Texas, came in at the end of the 90s with a law that was signed by Clinton guaranteeing that derivatives were hunky-dory. And that's basically how... But even under the laws they changed, they violated th federal laws and international laws tens of thousands of times. That's on record. They didn't even follow their own scam rules. And that's why we should have uh, state grand juries move for their indictments. Well, again, you can put all these people in jail, but you've got to get rid of 1.5 quadrillion of derivatives. The U.S. part is about uh, a quadrillion. Well, Webster, we have to put to them do. in jail. We have to put them in jail because they're going to expand us into an even bigger Ponzi scheme of world government for and by the bankers if we don't identify them as the crooks. I'm all for it, but you've got to destroy the derivative. The re-regulation of markets is what you need, and that means wipe out derivatives. In other words, not just re-regulate looking forward but re-regulate looking backward and declare that all of this stuff goes into the shredder. It gets deleted. You press the delete button and 1.5 quadrillion of derivatives. Because there's no way, as you and other economists and historians have proven, no way to fix this. It's a black hole that will right. consume everything. Look, we did the banker bailout bill. We did all this. And look, it only gets worse. The stock market's still plunging. This is why they say, uh, how come uh, Obama doesn't come forward with a solution for the banks? Well, there is no solution for the banks unless you destroy derivatives that's the whole thing hinges on derivatives and this has become more and more obvious to people how come paulson had to revamp the tarp from from the first tarp to to what it then became how come geithner can't give you any details why are they waiting week after week day after day citibank is now ho hovering at about a dollar a share it's a, there's a little bit of a pop today but i don't even think it'll last the day aig is 38 cents a share this is all derivatives there's an article today in McClatchy, very interesting, that if you take the five top banks, Citibank, J.P. Morgan, Hong Kong, Shanghai, uh, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo, they have more than enough derivatives losses to wipe out their entire capital base, meaning 
Those are all zombie banks. Now, it's quite obvious. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, under this crazy Sheila Bear, they have to seize those banks. Banks are seized in the United States basically every Friday now.